Hello and welcome friends. I'm Dana Bristol Smith with Leap to Success, a women's empowerment organization based in Carlsbad, California. And I welcome you to self-care in stressful times. And you know, every time I say that, I just wanna take a deep breath <laughs> because I think it's important to acknowledge that um, we are all feeling stress. We're feeling the ongoing stress of the pandemic. We are feeling the uncertainty in the environment. Um, and it's this collective experience that we're all having. And that's why we created this series to give you tools and practices to help you navigate through these uncertain times. So I'm really glad that you're here with us today. We are starting a new theme because it is March and our theme for March is the affirmation, I am nurtured by life. And I would like to invite you to go ahead and put your hand on your heart and say that affirmation out loud with me. So maybe you didn't catch it the first time, I'll say it and then I'll say it again and invite you to say it out loud and just feel it. I am nurtured by life. Now go ahead and even if it feels silly, put one or two hands on your heart and say, I am nurtured by life. Good. Thank you for doing that. I think it's important for us to know that even in, amidst the uncertainty of the pandemic, that we can still find ways to be nurtured by life. And that's what we're gonna be exploring each week of March. And I wanna give you a little preview. And I've also put the link to our website in the chat where you can go and register for each of our uh, webinars in the month of, month of March, because we've got some really wonderful topics. So here's a little preview. Today is nurturing relationships, the relationship with yourself and the relationships that you have with others. Next week on March 9th, we're gonna have a special guest, and that's Felina Hansen of Hera Hub, talking about creating a nurturing space for work and home. Felina has created Hera Hub, which is a co-working space for women, and it is a spa-like environment. And wouldn't it be nice to have your workspace be a spa-like environment? Well, you're gonna learn about that next week. Then on March 16th, our topic is nurturing creativity, which is gonna be a whole lot of fun to explore. March 23rd is nurturing nutrition with a special guest who is a holistic nutritionist, Elaine Bryan. So we're really looking forward to that because we haven't explored nutrition yet. And then on March 30th, we're gonna look at nurturing your mind and how you can keep learning and growing. So I hope that you will sign up in advance and share us with your friends and with your colleagues because I think everybody deserves a self-care break at least once a week. I'd like to now go ahead and introduce my co-host, Kelly Grimes. Here's Kelly. Thank you so much, Dana, and welcome everyone. I love that we pause in the beginning of the week to focus on how we can really nurture ourselves um, during these times that are stressful and even not, that we can continue. So I'm really excited uh, to talk about nurturing relationships. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kelly. And now friends, before we dive into our mindfulness activity, I would like to have you take a poll. And if you would please rate the current level of stress that you are feeling in your body, in your mind, um, in your emotions right now. What is your current level of stress on a scale from one being the lowest to 10 being highest? Thank you for clicking on the poll that you see in front of you. Um, what we've been noticing from you is that your levels of stress go down about 50% every time you come to this self-care and stressful times. And that makes me really happy that you are taking the time for yourself and that you are seeing your own level of stress go down. Oh, we're starting off pretty well today. Um, we've got some people at a three, um, we do have somebody all the way up to a nine. It looks like most responses, well, 
very similar from three up till seven. Okay, we'll see what we can do to bring that level of stress down. So right where you are seated um, right now, just take a deep breath in. Good. And I'd like to introduce you to soft belly breathing, which is a meditation practice. And I'd like to read something to you from James Gordon and his book is called The Transformation, Discovering Wholeness and Healing After Trauma. And I know that many of you who are with us each week, um, you are the helpers and you work with people who've experienced trauma and many of you have experienced trauma in your own lives. And what I believe is happening right now for all of us with the pandemic is that we as a society are experiencing a collective trauma. And events of the past can be triggered, emotions can flare up, and it's much um, more difficult to remain calm. It's much more difficult to have regular schedules and activities and ways that we take care of ourselves. So I'd like to give you this meditative tool called Soft Belly Breathing. And I see someone else has asked for the name of the book again. It's called The Transformation by James Gordon, Discovering Wholeness and Healing After Trauma. And I'll ask um, Alyssa, perhaps you can put this link up in the chat for folks. So. I would like to give you a really simple breathing practice called soft belly breathing, but I'd like you, um, I'd like to give you a little background on it. So just uh, sit comfortably where you are. And this is what James Gordon has to say about trauma and meditation. He says, meditation is the antidote to trauma. Trauma, as you know, creates storms of fear and aggression in the amygdala and the sympathetic nervous system. It suppresses the executive functions located in the frontal parts of the cerebral cortex, the front of the brain, which are the functions that help make us distinctly human, like judgment, self-observation, and compassion. Trauma binds us to the painful past and makes us continually apprehensive about the future. And trauma may override our intrinsic urge to connect with others, forcing us to fear and avoid those whose care and concern could help and heal us. He goes on to say that meditation frees us from those chains. It brings us into the present moment. So that's what I'd like you to experience right now, being here in the present moment with the practice of soft belly breathing. Here we go. So notice the chair that you're sitting in. And if you're uncomfortable, change your position, change your chair, um, create comfort your, for yourself for these few minutes. You might wanna have some things around you that make you feel peaceful and even more comfortable. Um, I love having flowers in my environment, as you can tell. Um, it brings me a sense of peace and a sense of calm to notice beauty. So maybe you can look around and just notice something that can bring you a sense of calm or peace, maybe something that you can see right now and appreciate for its beauty. Good. Now become aware of yourself sitting in the chair, breathing slowly and deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth and allow your belly to be soft. Let it expand on the in-breath and relax even more on the out-breath. You can say to yourself, soft as you breathe in and belly as you breathe out. This will help to focus your mind and remind you that you want your belly to be soft and relaxed. And just go ahead and say that in your mind. As you breathe in, say soft, and you breathe out, say belly. This is a concentrative meditation because you're concentrating on your breath and on the words soft and belly 
and on the feeling of your belly rising and falling, softening a little more with each exhalation. Now close your eyes if it's comfortable for you, and this will eliminate the external stimulation and will probably help you relax even a little bit more. And if thoughts come, just let them come and let them go and gently bring your mind back to the words soft, belly. Remembering to breathe in saying soft and breathe out through your mouth saying belly. And each time you breathe in, more oxygen enters your bloodstream. And this oxygen will feed and nourish all of the cells in your body. Breathing in and out like this with your belly soft and relaxed activates the vagus nerve. Vagus means wandering in Latin. This is a long and wide nerve that has many branches that runs up through your abdomen and your chest and back to your central nervous system, to your brain. It is the antidote to the fight or flight response of the sympathetic nervous system and to the stress response. So continue just for another moment breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth and knowing that with each breath, you're relaxing your body, you're quieting your mind, you're decreasing fear and you're enhancing your judgment and you're becoming more and more compassionate to yourself and others allowing yourself to connect more deeply and more closely to yourself and others. So go ahead and take in one more soft belly breath in through your nose saying soft and out through your mouth saying belly. and just notice a sense of peace and let that peace wash over you. And look what you've created for yourself. So go ahead and open your eyes and welcome back and bring that sense of peace and compassion back with you through the activities of your day. And know that you can create that for yourself anytime at any moment when you're feeling stress or discomfort. Ah, very good. So I'm gonna invite you now to tune in and listen to the wonderful tips that Kelly has to share on nurturing relationships. Here's Kelly. Thank you so much for that beautiful mindfulness practice, Dana. And that reminder that we can take short little periods of pause in our day to reconnect to ourselves, to ground ourselves, and that soft belly breathing. I mean, we could take 10 breaths, right? We know that from the research that taking 10 breaths can change our neural pathways. And we can improve the impact of that in settling our nervous system by doing this soft belly breathing. So we've been so inspired by teaching these mindfulness practices in self-care for stressful times that we've now included them in everything we do uh, at Leap to Success. So in our Leap to Confidence classes, we start with a mindfulness practice. We do that at our empowerment circles. And it's a beautiful way to nurture ourselves as we nurture our relationships. So I'm excited that that's what we're going to explore today. Now, last episode was all about prioritizing ourselves and our own self-care. And since we are looking at um, life nurtures us this month in the theme, we really wanted to look at how nurturing relationships are part of our self-care. And I love that the word nurturing is both an adjective and a verb. 
And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at how our, our relationships nurture us and how we can nurture them. So in this time of pandemic and physical distancing, some of us have felt lonely and isolated. We've suffered not being able to be together for those big celebrations of our life, like holidays and birthdays, graduations and weddings, um, and also those tender moments where being part of community is so grounding, like at funerals uh, or when our loved ones are in the hospital or maybe at a care facility um, where that kind of personal connection is how we nurture our relationships. And there's been a lot of sadness and disappointment. Um, and from that, like with all challenges, this is what I love about the human spirit, there's been this amazing creativity that has blossomed in finding new ways to stay connected. And, and thank you, Zoom and all our other video conferencing um, companies, because the fact is, is that many, many people have been using that as a way of staying connected as a way of staying connected, whether it's with family or friends or work, or being able to take classes online, like we do at Leap to Confidence Online, it has really opened up an opportunity to stay connected and nurture our relationships and feel nurtured by relationships in this time of the pandemic. Some other creative ways I've seen is that people are using the phone more, they're texting, or they're even writing letters as a way to stay connected and reach out with family and friends. And why is this all important? Well, we know from research that nurturing relationships are incredibly important to our health and well-being, and that our sense of belonging is critical to us feeling grounded, rooted in our lives, connected. I believe that our sense of belonging is actually an inside job. And so our consistent self-nurturing practices of coming home to ourselves, of being compassionate to ourselves and really listening, befriending ourselves and caring for ourselves, this allows us to have a true sense of belonging with others. Brene Brown, who is an amazing social worker and author, shares in one of her books that true belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in authentic in you let me let me start that again true belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being part of something and standing alone in the wilderness when we nurture this most important relationship this one with ourselves we have this beautiful sense of belonging and it nourishes ourselves and all the relationships that we feel a sense of belonging to. And we can do that as we maintain healthy boundaries and, and to allow ourselves to be our authentic selves. So when I look at nurturing, um, I see it as an inside out job. And that's what all of this self-care allows us to do is really to nurture this relationship with ourselves so that that's what we take out and the expectation that we have value, right? We believe in our own worth and value. And so those are the kind of relationships that we're nurturing. So I want you to think about someone in your life, some relationship that you have that feels really nurturing. Maybe it's with a family member or a partner. Maybe it's with a friend or a colleague. Maybe it's somebody that you've met and developed a relationship at a support group you attend. Now, think about how that relationship nurtures you. Do you feel support, encouragement, inspiration? Do you feel loved, accepted? Do you have an ability just to be who you are? I read a beautiful quote earlier by somebody who said, um, being with you is like coming home again and again. You know, that sense of just being able to be comfortable in who you are. So have you identified what it is that feels nurturing? Okay, now I wanna invite you to see that person's face in your mind's eye. And now breathe in with gratitude for that nurturing relationship. Really breathe in and out. 
keeping their image in your mind as you do. What I wanna remind you is that no matter how far away we are, we can invoke a sense of connection and gratitude any time for this nurturing relationship in our lives. And sometimes that's really important, particularly in these times we may not have seen our loved one in a really long time because of the pandemic, but we can still feel a deep sense of connection and we can really feel nurtured by that relationship. So that was the adjective part. Let's look at the verb part of nurturing. So you could think about that same person or another relationship that you've been wanting to deepen, that you've been wanting to nurture more. And I wanna invite you to think about ways you can nurture that relationship as a way of including the ways you already nurture yourself, right? So you can include that person in one of the nurturing practices you already have in your life. Let me give you an example. If you have a gratitude practice, you could connect with that person and exchange what each of you is grateful for every day. That would be one way. If you feel really deeply nurtured by taking walks, then mask up, socially distance, and go take a walk with a friend outside. If you love to dance, find a dance class on Zoom and invite a friend to join you. So she's on her Zoom, you're on your Zoom, but you're having a really wonderful nurtured experience together. If you love to cook, then you could make a meal and you could drop it off if the person is close by. If you love to garden, you could plant something. Um, I've been planting succulents because they're such beautiful examples to me of resilience. So I've been planting succulents and then bringing them and giving them to friends. If you uh, have a garden and you're already harvesting things, now, some folks can in Southern California and across the country, not quite yet. But if you have food that you're harvesting, you could share that as a way of nurturing relationships. And if you're creative, you could do any sort of creativity. You could make cards or paint a rock or a love note sign or any kind of creativity and share. You could put together a bouquet of flowers and drop it off at someone's house or send it to them. So there's a lot of ways that we nurture ourselves that can also be nurturing in our relationships. Uh, a few other ways I think of um, are we can send texts of love and support to a new person each day. We could go through our, our contacts and just decide, oh, I haven't reached out to this person. I'm going to send them um, a message of love and support. Or if you're part of a group, you could actually um, start a group text. And you that could be a, a safe space where you can give and and get support. Um, I've noticed in a lot of the support groups that I facilitate, including our well-attended empowerment circles for Leap to Confidence graduates, that holding this space online weekly has been a lifeline for people. It's allowed them to continue to grow even in a pandemic. And being part of these support groups has been so inspiring because I continue to witness people's resilience, their courage, and their hope. Um, as a family, on um, both sides of my extended family, we have a weekly Zoom call, and it's been such a beautiful way to stay connected and hold space to support each other in all these months. And when my daughter is away at school in Santa Cruz, um, we've been waking up and meditating together and then setting intentions for the day that have been really nurturing. And finally, my cul-de-sac has had a weekly physically distanced concert for the last, I wanna say we're on like 49 weeks of doing it. And it's been the bright spot um, in my week and just a real joy. So you can be as creative as you can think of being. So I would love if you would share now, because I know there's a lot of wisdom on this webinar today, um, what are ways you nurture your relationships and what are you inspired to, to add in? So what are your ways already and what would you like to do that might be a new way of bringing more nurturing into your relationships? I'm going to see what you're sharing. So it looks like playing games. For, for somebody, playing games is a wonderful way to nurture relationships. Check in phone calls. So just going through and deciding, you know, who have I not heard from and, and how can I show them that I care? 
Um, someone else shared that I take walks to the beach or around my neighborhood with family and friends and also talk on the phone. It's such a great way if you have a, um, haven't talked to somebody in a long time to do some exercise, but be talking on the phone in the, at the same time. That's wonderful. Um, other things is schedule times on the calendar to reach out to certain people. So that's beautiful. Um, just being intentional. I think that's really what nurturing is about. It's being intentional. And we know that having that deep and profound sense of connection, especially in these times that we could feel scared and uh, the uncertainty of life is even more nurturing. I'm gonna share a few other things people have shared. Um, Check-in phone calls and meetings for walks, talking on the phone, exchanging funny or uplifting emails, going for walks together, Zooming with friends that aren't in San Diego. That's beautiful. So I look forward to hearing more and more ways that you are feeling nurtured by your relationships and that you are nurturing your relationships. Remember, self-nurturing is about nurturing the most important relationship we'll ever have, that one with ourselves. So continue to nurture yourself and your relationships to embrace feeling nurtured by life. Thank you so much for being here today. And I'm going to hand it back to Dana. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Those were um, great ways to nurture the relationships that we have in our lives. And I, th I think you're right. It's really about just being more intentional um, and keeping those people who are important to us close to us, um, whether we can be with them physically or not. So thank you to everybody who shared their own tips. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and take our closing stress poll. So if you all would please um, rate once again, the current level of stress that you're feeling. And let's see if um, your intention to give yourself self-care has brought down your level of stress today. So thank you for putting that in. And while we are doing that, I want to just put up one more time in the chat the um, web page that you can go to to sign up for our future episodes. And okay, there's our current level of stress. And it looks like it's about three and a half is the average out of 10. So good job. You brought your stress down and collectively as a group, we did. So I'm really glad to see that. Um, and I'm going to ask you all for, um, I'm going to ask you for a favor. And the favor is to please share this webinar series with people who will benefit from it. Um, you will be spreading an act of kindness by doing that, by letting someone that you care about know that there is a resource available to them to help them navigate through this uncertain time, to give them some self-care practices that they can incorporate into their life to just help them feel better uh, physically, emotionally, um, and spiritually when we take good care of ourselves. So I'm so glad that you were with us today, that you're making this investment in yourself and please share it with a friend. We want to continue to empower people with these healthy practices and you can be an advocate and helpful to those you love and those you care about by sharing this with them. So I look forward to seeing you all again next week for self-care in stressful times. And next week we are having our special guest, Felina Hansen. So I hope that you'll be with us next week and learn some ways to create a nurturing space. You can find us on Facebook Live if you ever miss one of these and also on our YouTube channel where we have our self-care library. So be well, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye.